Sunday. That's the Sunday following Christmas on Saturday. And that'll be that'll be yesterday, two weeks. Okay? So when our uh, Christmas is, and then today, two weeks, we'll be omitting our service on that Sunday. Does that sound okay? If there's a lot of hoopla and negatives and so forth, carry on, just let me know. And we'll say what we can't do about it, all right? But uh, right now, that's what we've got in focus. Okay, everybody clear? All right, all right, we got it all? Awesome. Are y'all going to keep coming back in the choir after, <laughs> after Christmas? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. That's just a private conversation I said with them this morning, okay? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very, very much. Amen. I, uh, I would like to uh, read a card to you this morning from, uh, from Sister Frances Spears and uh, because uh, of her health and able to be here, but she did, did send a car, card, and I would like to read it to you. Uh, it says, Dear Church, Thank you all for your prayers. Appreciate it so very much. God continue to bless each of you with love through the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior, Francis and David Spears. So, Sister Spears, God bless you. Thank you for the card. We appreciate that very, very, very much. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Well, I think that pretty well takes care of all the preliminaries that we needed to uh, relate and share with you this morning. There's not any other announcements need to be shared that I'm forgetting about, is it, other than the choir practice this evening? We all ready? Praise the Lord. God bless you then. Let's stand together. Then we'll give the information as far as, well, I'm just going to go ahead and share this with you, that uh, Brother Kenneth Medlock came home last night. Amen. Amen. Can't tell me God don't answer prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Off of the dialysis. It was in most of the week this past week, and then came home last evening. So what a blessing. So thank the Lord we give God all the praise and the glory. So let's invite the presence of God together collectively in our services, and let's just let God have his way. Everyone pray. Would you, Father God, we lift, your, lift you up this morning with thanksgiving and praise. And, Father, for the opportunity the privilege we have to worship you collectively in your house, Lord. Thank you for your children. Thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you because we know that it is in you. We live, we move, we have our being, Lord. Let your presence now just engulf this service, Lord. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost just minister to have your way, Lord. And we want to thank you for your love, your presence, and your grace that makes it all possible through the covering and the protection of your precious blood. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your blood in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said... Amen. amen, amen. Let your neighbor know you're glad to see him this morning. God glad bless you this you, morning. Brothers. Let's worship. Let's have church. Amen. God bless you. When all God's children get there, we're going to have a good time. When all God's children get there,
Page 401, the unclouded day. Page 401. Yes, thank you, Lord. Should be on the board. Do you know it? Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Storm clouds rise. Well, oh, they tell me I'm an unclouded day. 
more sorrow. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for that. 212, page 212. Keep on the firing line. <clears throat>
Let's give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. God is worthy of all the praise that we can give him. He is worthy, worthy, worthy. Amen. 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 God bless you. Praise the Lord. We want to give you an opportunity this morning to minister to the Lord in the time of our giving. So as the Lord has blessed and ministered uh, throughout the times that we've had and he's given us what we've had, we have uh, no way to be able to give what is deserving to him. So he just says, just give that portion. Hallelujah. All he asks. So God bless you this morning. As you do give unto the Lord, we know the Lord will bless you this morning in our time of giving. As God is blessed and interceded, we know that he will minister. And we know he's going to take care of what needs to be done in the church. Brother Donald, would you ask God bless us on giving, please, sir? Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, we do, Lord. Grant it, Lord. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 God bless you this morning. You give such a cell is going to minister to us this morning in our offertory. Praise the Lord. So you worship the Lord as she ministers to us this morning. Thank you, Sister Zelda. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's wisdom when it comes to worshiping and magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Zelda. Awesome. Great words in that, too. <coughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his blessings, and uh, I'm glad this morning that we're here that we can receive of those blessings, that we can call on the Lord on the behalf of others as well. And that's what we want to do. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God that he would touch you and he administer it this morning unto knees because we know we serve a great 
and a mighty need supplier. Again, it was just uh, great to be able to share that with you this morning that uh, Sister, Sister Brother Kenneth Medlock, he uh, has made it home. Thank, thank, thank the Lord for it. I was, uh, I was saying, Sister, because uh, Sister Stella and I just made agreement. I said, all right, now talking to her, I said, now, if I don't hear from you on Saturday evening, I'm going to know he's home. She said, yes. So I have not heard from her, so I'm believing he's home. Praise God. And uh, so thank the Lord for it. And we're just continuing to pray to lift it up because you know it's going to be a timing element for Brother Kent to get on his feet and so forth. So let's keep him in our prayers because we know that certainly the Lord is able to continue to lift him up, strengthen him. He is the century man. Amen. He's going to live to be 100 whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God for it. Amen. So we want to continue to pray. And uh, Kelsey, God bless you. See, good to see you this morning. Amen. Overcoming her knee surgery this past week. Being able to see her today. And uh, continue to pray for God's continued strength and uh, refreshings and healings there that is needed. And uh, uh, report for on behalf of Sister Sharon Allman. Sister Sharon's son, David, he came home last week as well. Yeah, so thank God for that, that the Lord hears, he answers prayer, and that he is the one that we can call upon no matter what our need may be. So no matter other severity or the uh, minute it may seem, God is one that is in control. Amen. Can you pray for our young seven-year-old girl, Alenia? That uh, Alenia is, uh, is, she's there at St. Jude's, and uh, mom and dad is there, and been there all week. So, uh, continue to pray for God's intercession for this young girl. We know the Lord certainly is going to intercede for her. Also, for the other needs uh, that we've been praying for, on behalf of Brother Seal Haston, let me say that this morning. Thanks to the church for your prayers. Thank you for your commitment and your faithfulness to them. God bless you so much, so much uh, for your faithfulness and giving to the Hastings. Uh, and uh, he is uh, recovering on, on going, re, knee replacement and under, during going through a lot of pain. So, uh, uh, so I know Kelsey can relate to him from a good bit uh, uh, today. So, uh, but continue to keep Brother, Brother C.L. Hastings in your prayers for his full recovery there from his surgery. We know the Lord certainly is able. We know we've been praying, and there's several that are recovering from the standpoint from battling with cancer. We know the Lord is the answer this morning, so keep these in your prayers for God to intercede and to minister unto them this morning. And I know the Lord is going to hear, and he's going to answer prayer this morning in a special way. We want to continue praying for those of our own household of faith. you got your prayer list. You receive that on each Sunday morning. So I know you pray for these for each throughout the week. Thank you for your faithfulness and your prayers. We know the Lord's going to honor that prayer as we see the results of that. Continue praying that the Lord's going to touch into these in a special way. And we want to pray for the Lord to touch into our nation. Our nation that needs the Lord in a special way, pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. God is the one that we can call upon and pray for God's conviction and intercession. Up over these, praying that God's going to touch into our, our young people also. The Lord and minister, we know that this thing is still, they're talking about it, trying to run more rampant and et cetera. The other thing that is trying to trail in the areas as far as this coronavirus thing so let's continue to pray for these and many that have been victimized by this virus. Let's pray for the Lord's intercession protections. We know the Lord is the one that we can call upon. And don't forget to pray and believe as we do for God's blood covering and blood protections up over the church and up over his children. Believe in God for the intercessions there. Also praying for our missionaries at home and abroad. God, the touch up over their lives. We know God is the answer this morning. So continually praying, believing the Lord to minister to them this morning. How many with just a show of hands, there's lost loved ones, standing in the gap, believing God to touch you, bring healing spiritually above all healings. Um, how we need a great revival to take place um, in America, here in our own Jerusalem, praying for God to minister and to minister unto lives. We know God's the answer. We know he hears the answer's prayer. Can I hear a good amen? amen? Let's believe the Lord this morning in a special way, and we know that he's going to answer and minister to prayer. Sister Diane's going to lead us in a course to prepare our hearts to go before the throne of grace. Let's believe God this morning. Amen. Sister Diane, amen. Lord, I can't 
the surgeries, Lord, that they went through, Lord. Father, for bringing them through it, Lord. God, because we know that it is your hand extended that has made it possible, Lord, that they are even here this morning or that they are at home, Lord. Father, recuperating, Lord, from the surgeries that they have encountered and went through, Lord. We pray the touch up over their physical body. Lord, you know who they are. For the names have been given them, and even from Christ, Lord, some of the names that have not been given we know you're that presence, of, and God, that you'd overshadow them, because we know that the angels are sent forth to minister unto those that are heirs, that are heirs of the salvation, God, that you continue to lift them up, God, to renew their strengths, and God, that they can mount up with those wings of eagles, and they can run and not be weary, and to walk and to not faint, Lord. Thank you, God, for the touch of over Brother Glenn Evans, God, you gave him this past week, Lord. Out of the Celts is here, Lord, for the touch of zeal hasted, God. Lord, for the intercession of your spirit, Lord, that has brought forth Brother Kenneth Medlock, God. Lord, you give him the healing of God that is needed in his healing body of God. Continually lift him up, God. And we know that only you can, Lord. Let healing come, Father. Give him Elsap, Lord. Ronnie Owens, God. For the different ones, Lord. Lord, the battle with the cancer, God. Lord, for the young Austin, God. Lord, we owe you're able to touch this, Father, this young man, God. For the healing, God, that is needed, Lord. Totally, completely from this cancer, God. Lord, touch you to bring healing, Lord, this morning, God. For each one that is written upon our prayer list, God. You see each name. You see the severity of it, God. Lord, you're able to give them what is needed to sustain them, God. Lord, give them healing, miracles, God. We know you're the miracle worker. You're the great I am, God. And Lord, there's not anything you cannot heal or lift up. Father, we are the creatures. And you're the great creator, God. That your holy hand that is extended, that is not waxing short, God. Give them healing, healing through the power of your spirit, God. Let them feel it and know that you're the one that comes to minister and overshadow and to gird them, oh God, this morning, Lord. Lord, we pray this morning, touch into our missionaries at home and abroad, God. Lord, we thank for those that, Lord, was released week before. Lord, that they came home, Lord, from the Haitian captivity. There's still 12 that are still held in captivity. Touch into our missionaries, Lord, those that are ministering, God. Lord Jesus, we know that you can undertake for them. Give them fruit for their labors, God. Let them feel that and encourage them and undergird them this morning, O oh God, through the power of your name. Lord, we pray for our nation, our nation that needs you this morning. You are the God that has created and now that brought forth the opportunity. We can even be here in this particular place of a nation, God. Moving our leaders, Lord, that salvation come, Lord, to moms and dads and sons and daughters, God. You said no man come to your father except your spirit would draw them. Draw them, oh God. Let there be a wooing. Let there be a stirring of a holy conviction, God, of over lives and of over souls, Lord. They need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, let your presence be that in 
be that courage and that encouraging God. The blood, for the blood's tear. Oh, never, never, never lose his power, God. Save and deliver, Lord, even to the uttermost, God. You're the power and the glory. We love you. Thank you, Lord. You are the Lord. We love you. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Think about it this morning. Oh, we are, you are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. And God. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. believe that this morning. I'll slip a hand up in thanksgiving for him. Father, thank you this morning for hearing and answering prayer. We thank you. We thank you. You are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And we do that, Lord. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you in your wonderful name. And all of God's children in agreement said, amen. 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 God bless you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. If you can, thank you so much for standing and Reverend to the Lord this morning in our time of prayer. God hears him and he answers prayer. Thank the Lord because he is a prayer answerer this morning. He is the exalted one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Sarah's uh, young girl was uh, running a high fever this morning, so we need to keep her in our prayers for healing there. She's not here this morning, but Sister Debbie has taken her children's church over and to our children's church area there across the way. So God bless you, and uh, amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank God for our children. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I, uh, I need to make another announcement before I turn this pulpit over to our speaker this morning. I need to make an announcement to you that uh, Safe Haven is going to be meeting this, uh, this Friday evening going to be their time this is uh every other week that they meet with the uh the youth there and our in our uh meeting place there at safe Haven for our our teenagers and our young people and uh brother keith and uh sister monica and i know that uh brother john and sister jennifer i know they help them on occasions as well on every other week so thank you guys so much for your faithfulness in doing so but uh, on this announcement that I'm making, I'm going to have to have Sister Monica to make the clarification for me on this announcement. So I understand that you said that uh, we need some help with the gifts for our young people. So I guess that you're going to be giving them gifts on Friday evening there at, uh, at the uh, teenager spot. Is that correct? Yes, we're going to be having... We're going to be having a Christmas party for a lot of the teens. A lot of people don't realize we have had a small crowd, 10 or less. Last week we had 23 that signed up. I bet you there was at least 25 to 30 kids there, which was awesome. We're going to have a Christmas party, and we would like to be able to give every kid there some sort of gift because this is on behalf of the church. A lot of these kids still Good. do not have a home Good. church. So if there's anybody here that would like to say, hey, how can I help? Can I bring some cookies? Can I make a donation to buy a gift or something like that? Please get with me or Jennifer and let us know if you want to do something or make a monetary donation. It would be greatly appreciated. All right. Amen. Good. So if you have any questions then, just uh, get in touch with Sister Monica or uh, Sister Jennifer House and... Uh, they will give you instructions as far as any way that can be helped with them as far as with our youth. If they're going to be having their Christmas get-together then this coming Friday. I'm, yes, Friday, isn't it? Is it going to be Friday? Yes, thank you. It's going to be this coming Friday evening when they're going to be having their Christmas get-together for the youth. They also have those that, uh, that they come and are a part of it uh, that uh, is from the community because it is really a, a community area, but it is sponsored by our, our church here that they have that. So thank you so much for your support and your involvement in that. And if there's a way you think that you might can help, well, ask them. And uh, they'll be able to give you any instruction that they get that as far as any type gifts 
that uh, be able to minister to the uh, to the teenagers in that will be coming, getting together with them this coming Friday evening. Amen. So thank you so much. God bless you in, in doing so. Amen. I want to welcome Brother Dave with us. Amen. Our visitor with us this morning. Now, Brother Dave, you may visit this morning, but you're not a visitor no more. Just want you to know that. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Glad to, glad to have uh, Brother Bernie back home. God bless you, Brother Bernie. Welcome back. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Sister Burke Holder, God bless you. Amen. So good to be in church this evening. Amen. Uh, this morning, rather. And glad that you're here this morning. And uh, thank God for the opportunity that we have the health and the strength to be here. Amen. Well, we have another Brother Dave, but this is Brother David. Amen. Brother David Rhodes is going to be ministering to us. We got three great Daves in here. This is a Dade here, just in case you didn't know. Okay, but anyway. But uh, Brother David Rhodes is going to be bringing the word to us this morning. I'm glad to have Brother David. Glad he's a part of us and part of our church. So we're going to turn the service over to Brother Rhodes. We're going to ask him just to come take his liberty in the Lord. You just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you through him. And I believe God's got some good things for us. Can you hear a good amen? Amen. Brother Roach, God bless you as you come this morning. Thank you this morning so very much. Let's give him a good warm family welcome this morning. He's a part of us. Am I on now? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> A tiny bit of ring up here, it seems like. Maybe just the way it seems to me. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? How many of you has He been good to? Well, everybody didn't raise their hand. So which ones of you is it now that he hasn't been good to? Isn't that just like a crowd? You just can't get them all to raise their hands on anything. And some won't raise their hand at all. Period. <laughs> I'm glad that I have come to know someone that has blessed my life ever since the day I gave my heart to Him. He's never failed me, and He never will fail me. Sister Vella, that was a beautiful song that you did this morning. It blessed my heart. A wonderful song. This lady can sing. Give her another hand round of clap. Praise God. Amen. She's a special person, and a special person to have in this body. God's so good to us. He's brought a lot of folks here, and He's going to bring a lot more. I said He's brought a lot of folks here, and He's going to bring a lot, lot more. Amen. Praise God. There's a family that has been coming to this church for 40-something years that I know of. And I don't know the exact time that was, the exact day, but I was the one that married them. I didn't marry her or him, I married them. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make a clarification on that kind of stuff in the world we live in today. I was talking to a gentleman just yesterday or day before that uh, is I'm quite uh, acquainted with and he was talking to me about his girlfriend that he has located. And he says she has two sisters that are husband and wife. I said, now, let me, let me understand that. I don't think I quite grasp this idea. Well, he said they are lesbians. And I said, well, I tell you what. The only thing I want to have to do with them is to help lead them to Jesus and let them find faith in Him. And they will no longer be that way. They will have changed to become like Him. Amen. 
I had a family in this church. I just started to tell you that a moment ago that I married them 40-some years ago. And this lady said to me, I don't know, a few weeks back, she said to me, I made a deal with my family to do this if they will do this. And so she said, I cook dinner for them every Sunday. And in exchange for that, I've tried to get them to promise me that they will be a part of church on Sunday. Now they haven't so far, but I haven't given up. How many of you has given up? How many of you has given out? You're not giving out anything? (laughs) There are a few things in life that we shouldn't touch. (laughs) Amen. God's good to us. God is very good to us. There's nothing in this world that He cannot do. Because He is... He is, he said Yahweh, that's the same as God. That's ringing just a little bit. I don't know what I'm going to do about it, but probably not much. (laughs) Probably not much. I'm grateful for people that are in the church and they are doing their best to get their families in the church and want them to be here, and want them to participate in what goes on in this house of God. God's a wonderful God, and He never, ever, ever fails. How many of you would say a big amen to that? He never fails. I'm grateful that I have a hope in Him. I want to, if you will allow me a few moments this morning... I want to share a few words with you that I believe that God put in my heart. And I am excited about what the Lord, always what the Lord puts in my heart. Because if He keeps me up about half of the night, I know it's from Him. Or all night. I went to bed early Yesterday afternoon, not a, not wasn't quite you know midnight. It was about seven o'clock, and I thought I'm going to really get a good rest for a while. And about eight thirty, he woke me up, and I have not been back asleep since that moment. The Lord gave me something though, in lieu of all of that, and I wouldn't trade for what He gave me in my heart for two nights rest. God's an awesome God and He never does, never does He fail. He's promised me that if I'll be who I need to be in His presence and along with Him that He will answer my prayers. He also has made that promise to you. And He will if you will. I said He will if you will. There's a two-way street here, and we've, we've got to do it if we expect Him to do it. I want to read you a passage of Scripture. It's found in John chapter 12. And I think that you will find it to be a very interesting passage of Scripture. One that is, should be, at least, very familiar with you. And I pray that it's one that causes you to stand up and look to see who you are and why you are who you are. God is a wonderful, wonderful Lord. And it starts out like this in John 12 and 1. Then Jesus... Six days before the Passover 
came to Bethany. Thank you for standing. He came to, he came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which he had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Now, did you, did you, did you grasp that? Here's a man, my Bible said he was dead. Now, if you just want to back up just a little tiny bit, you will read in another passage. And in that other passage, you'll read in the 11th chapter. When Mary was, when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if you had been there, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many of you know that was a true statement? If he had been there, his, this brother would not have died. That was Mary's brother. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And the scripture said that Jesus, this is the only place that I know of in the scripture that it says Jesus wept. But Jesus wept along with her. And then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused the event, caused that even this, this man should not have died? And here's a question that was being asked about, but Jesus, the scripture said, raises Lazarus. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh, cometh to the grave, and it was a cave and a stone, and a stone had been rolled upon it. So uh, Martha, the sister of him that was, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time you cannot raise him because he is already decaying and he is already has a smell to him that is an odor that is not a good odor. He stinks, that's what he said. And then what Jesus said to her, I Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. If you want to see the glory of God, believe with what God says in His Word that He wishes to do for us all. So what did He do in this particular case? He said to Lazarus, Come forth. That's all He said was come forth. And he came forth, and the scripture says that he was wrapped in all kinds of death clothes, if you want to put it that way, and they had placed him in the tomb, and he was dead. And Jesus said to those that were hanging around there, loose this man and let him go. Loose this man and let him go. Sometimes that's the only thing that can happen in our lives, uh, that will cause us to move on for God to do what God wants us to do is to get everybody in, in sync with us and we loose him and we let him go. And so that's what, that's what Jesus said to him. Loose this man and let him go. Let him be who he is. Let him be Lazarus. Let him be the one that I raised from the dead because I could raise him from the dead and I wanted to raise him from the dead so let it be just that way. Now I want to go back just for a moment to 12 verses of Scripture, or 8 verses of Scripture here. In chapter 12, then Jesus six days before uh, Bethany, six days before the Passover, came unto Bethany, and there was Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, there they made him a supper. And Martha served at the supper, at the table, at that table with him. And then Mary took 
one pound, it says one pound of ointment of spikenard very closely, a very costly rather, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. There's some significance to what that verse of Scripture says. The Bible says that her hair was her glory. And he wiped the feet of Jesus, or she wiped the feet of Jesus with her hair, which was her glory. Can you imagine that? That's what the Scripture says. I'm just telling you what it says. She wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. There was a very special something going on here as well. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, and by the way, at this particular meeting, they were at Simon's house. This is where they were talking about this and what was going on here. But this Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for what it was worth for 300 pence and given to the poor? Why didn't you take that money and why didn't you give it to the poor? So, because there's a lots of poor that needed. But he was a... He was a bad person. He was not a good person. Judas is carried Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this given to the poor, this, this, this amount that we had here? Then he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had a bag and he bare what was put in the bag. It was all his and it all belonged to him and he was going to do what he wanted to with it. And then Jesus said to him, let her alone. I'm going to tell you, it's coming the day and the hour and the time when we need to come to the understanding that it is time for the devil to leave us alone and we can go on with our lives and be who he wanted us to be and wants us to be and is going to continue to want us to be. It is time that we just simply come to the place that we are going to call his hand on this. And he said to and he said to Lazarus, or rather he said to he said to him that day, leave. God, Jesus said to him, leave, let, leave, leave her alone. Don't bother her anymore. Leave her alone. And so we get into this area. We begin to talk about what God wants to do in our lives. Now I want to tell you something. We have a tendency to live a mediocrity uh, kind of a life. It's just kind of a mediocre, media, medium, you know, not, not very far up, not very far down, expected, ordinary, customary, habitual. Uh, we conform. We do all the things that we need to do in the church anymore just to conform to what people want. And it's not about what people want. It's about what God is interested in in each one of us. Be not conformed to time, but be not, be not, be not conformed to time. Uh, did you get that? Not conformed to time. Be not conformed, but be transformed, but be conformed to eternity. You can be seated if you would like. I've kept you standing long enough. Didn't mean to do that. What does the word transformed mean? It simply means to make a dramatic change. I don't know if everybody in here has made a dramatic change in your life or not, but if you haven't, it's certainly the day that you should. It's certainly the day that you ought to. And then we look at this not wanting this just to be you know, like a, the standard being a dime a dozen. Romans 12 and 2. There they made him a supper and Martha served. 
But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table. And he sat at the table simply because he was the recipient of being raised from the dead. Can you imagine the excitement that must have been going on in that house on that day with the exception of the one who was the thief? Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. So he was a son of a man who had wiped, who had wiped out, who had had his, his thing that happened to him in his life. He had leprosy, and God had wiped that out and healed him of leprosy. And he was giving thanks to God for what God had done in his life, but here was his son that was saying what he was saying about what we should have done with this money. Sometimes that happens in the church. When the church needs something and there's an offering taken and a nice one at that. And when we begin to look at that, we could have, oh, we could have took that offering for 10 dozen different things and given it to someone else. But today was a day when the scripture talks to us about it was just before, it was just before the Passover. We were only, well, not actually six days away now. We're only about five days away now from what was about to happen to this man. And that was that Jesus was going to hang on the cross and that not only was he going to hang on the cross, but as in doing so, he will have given his life so that we could have life and have it more abundant. Now, which one of you in here would raise your hand and say, I'm willing to give myself for someone else. Only ten hands didn't go up. I mean, all, I'm sorry. Specknard in the Hebrew is a nard, and it means light. It also means genuine and pure. And so that's what was going on in this house this day. It's what was taking place on this day. And that ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Isn't it wonderful that God knows how to do what He knows how to do. This ointment that was used that day to anoint Jesus, it was pure and spotless, and it was for the Lamb of God. Just days before his burial, Solomon prom uh, prophesied something a thousand years before this happened. I don't know if you know that or not. But Solomon prophesied 1,000 years earlier of this moment, this momentous event. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. He says, While the king sitteth at his table, my spikenard, sends forth a smell thereof. There was such a odor, such a beautiful odor that was coming from this spikenard that had been placed upon this, this king of Jesus, or King Jesus. And said it at the, he said, and, and he said it at the, my table, and from, from, sendeth forth the same smell thereof. This oil was symbolic, and we need to think about this. It was very symbolic of the interworking of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you the Holy Spirit operates as good as He ever has in all of the history of mankind. He operates as good as He's ever operated in mine or your life. He is operating like He's ever done, like He has forever done all the rest of the days of His life. But he knew that his time was at hand. 
He knew what was about to take place. And I, I asked uh, Monica just a little while ago if she, would, if she would turn on some music, and I want you to listen to this music for it's about two or three or four minutes, and I want you to listen to this and pay attention to what it's saying. Turn it up just a little bit so everybody can hear it. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. I want you to turn your eyes upon Jesus. I want you to look in His face fully. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Turn your eyes to the hillside where justice and mercy
Thank you, Jesus. Let me read you one more verse of Scripture. Or the, read it again, basically. After the thief had done his thing, then said Jesus, let her alone. And then, here's the rest of that Scripture. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. What did that say? It says, I have had in very safe keeping this pound of spikenard that I've been saving for a long, long time that I could use at this moment. This is the time that this needs to happen. Against the day of my burying, Jesus said that. What she had done, and he says, my burying will be in a very short time. And you have saved all of this to give to me. To put on my body, to put on my hair, to put on my head and on my feet. Say, well, that doesn't seem like a very wonderful thing to be doing is wiping her, taking her hair to wipe his feet and that sort of thing. But that tells you how much Mary loved Jesus. And I think that if we can grasp it at all, it should help us to understand how much we need the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because this was the Holy Spirit at work in this man's life. And the king sat at his table a thousand years before and said, I smell this same atmosphere. I want to tell you that if you want something that will change your life forever, take a good deep breath of that smell that this lady was smelling as she wiped his feet and wiped his head. The oil is a, is a, a working of the Holy Spirit according to what the Word of God says. And you know what it cost? This is why the thief was so upset by it. Because the scripture says that the cost of this spikenard that she had used was worth a whole year's wages. That could be for you or for anybody in this church, 40, 50, 60, 70,000, could even go to $100,000. That was the worth of this. I don't know what it's worth to you. I don't know what it will be worth to you or would be worth to you. But I can tell you that in, the, in the, what the Scripture teaches is that it was, anywhere, it was anywhere from the beginning wages that people had all the way to the top of the Richter. You know, when you get all the way up there, you've got all of it. But it was very, very costly. This day calls... By you and by me, it calls for extravagant love. What am I saying? I'm saying that you can't love Him too much. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you give. I don't, give, I don't care how you see it. But I'm going to tell you when they made Him a supper and served. But Lazarus was one of the ones that was sitting there by Him. And I can tell you, he knew what it was all about because it wasn't been but just a few days before that until he, was, he, would, he had been in the grave already four days. That's all he had been there until Jesus raised him from the dead. God is an awesome God and He never fails to be that way and He never will. That's why this day calls for extravagant love from every one of us. They made Him a supper and and they served and they did what they did because of who they loved. And they loved Him. 
and they knew that, in fact, Mary knew what she was talking about when she was talking about that, that spike nerve that was there was, had been against that day of, her, of my bearing. And Jesus knew that was going on too. And he said this to her so that she would understand this is why you've been saving this all the time. Because you wanted to do something that was far beyond what you could have ever done if you had not saved and saved and saved for these years that you saved to worship Him and to do something special for Him. I want to tell you, God is an awesome God. He never fails. He does change our atmosphere. And He wants to change our atmosphere. I heard of this and I want to just share it with you right quick. Some things should seem untouchable. And I think if I had to put myself in the same position that Mary had put herself, I think it would have been a place that would be untouchable. All I could have done would have been fallen on my knees before Him. And saying, help me make a dramatic change. Be not conformed to time, but be conformed to eternity. Because eternity is about to start. Eternity is about to start. It was used to anoint Jesus the pure and spotless lamb four days before his burial. Just a few days before his burial. And that's what that song said just a little while ago. O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and a life more abundantly free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's what He wants us to do. When we worship Him, let us not just sing, but worship. He will make Himself known when you do. Did you hear me? I said He will make Himself. No, you'll know, he will know. And it'll be wonderful that we learn how to know. The kingdom of God is here right now. Did you hear me? The kingdom of God is here now. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead is in this house this morning. And He is among us. He is doing something for us. And He wants to do things for us. His faithfulness is my security. Did you hear me? His faithfulness is my security. Everything depends on the heart. I'm not talking about whether you have a heart attack or not. I'm talking about for the heart that He gave you. I'm talking about everything depends on the heart. He brought us out so that He could bring us in. And what I mean by that, when He brought all of His people out of Egypt. The intent of God was to bring them into the promised land. And so when we come out of sin, He wants us to come into His presence and walk with us. It took 40 years for them to get to the Canaan's land, but He still got them there. 
He still got them there. The Bible said the clothes weren't worn out and everything was well. He took care of them all the way through. And when they got there and could have gone in the very first time, they decided that we cannot do this. There was 12 of them went in to take a look at it all and 10 of them came back and said, they're giants and we're grasshoppers and we can't do it. There's not any way it's going to take place. We cannot do that. So let's not go after the fight right now. But there was two that said, yes, we can uh, and we will. And they did. It was just a long time after that before they could do that. Jesus brings us into God's presence. He's the one who brought us into God's presence a while ago when that choir was singing in, a beautiful, in beautiful voices uh, and there was some glory in the house that was coming down. He brought us into God's presence at that moment. That's what it's all about. That's what we ought to be doing. Uh, and that's how we ought to be living our lives when we walk with Jesus. Uh, we need to be walking with Him and talking with Him and believing on Him and, and looking to Him and, and knowing that He's trying to bring us into the presence of Almighty God and glorify God Himself. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about your neighbor. It's not about those that will someday be in this house. But it, what it's all about, it's about my, my fellowship with Him. And when I have a fellowship going on with the King of Kings, I can tell you there's more going on then than there is in any other part of our lives. Hallelujah. God's a big God and I love Him and I, I appreciate His blessings. Death Death to self makes room for Him to be all. Did you hear what I said? Death to self makes room for Him to be all. I'm grateful because that's what He is and who He is. And I read... I read in the book yesterday, last night, this morning. And I want to read you what I read. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And I'm looking at Scripture this morning that I believe I like to read the best in the world because it's the closest to the right that we have known to man. And what this says in this verse, what this says is that in the, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the next verse is a totally different verse. But what the first verse says, He has no past. God has no past. So how did, how did he get here? I can't tell you. It just says in the beginning, God. That's where he showed up. And he has no past. In the beginning was God. How many of you will say that with me today? In the beginning. Say it with me. In the beginning was God. Amen. I want you to listen to this song one more time. And as you listen, I want you to worship the God that we serve, the God that cared in us for us, that He gave His Son for us. And that was the time that was about to take place 
in the scripture that I read from you today. Just four days away from the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Turn your eyes upon Will you stand to your feet this morning and just sing one in his wonderful face. Turn your eyes and upon the things of earth will grow strange. Things of this earth will grow strangely, strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Give him some thanks for what he's done. Give him some thanks for what he's done. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you do and what you have done for us. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you love today. Love him today. Love him today. Love him today. Love him today. today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We're grateful to you for all your blessings on our lives. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you just lift both hands toward heaven and just say thank you, Lord Jesus, and give him thanks for all he's done. Father, I cannot ever understand why you loved me enough that you gave me what you gave me. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. Jesus, I love you and I'm grateful for your divine presence in our lives this morning. Jesus, we give you thanks for all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh,
Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. We must give him our all in all because he gave everything for us. Did he not? Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Feel like you've been to church? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me remind you now, next Sunday is going to be our Christmas Sunday. Choir's going to minister to you. You're going to enjoy the ministry that Sister Diane and the choir is going to give you. So don't miss it. Bring somebody with you. But if you bring somebody with you now, whenever you bring your plate, bring another plate with you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, don't forget. Now, potluck next Sunday. Bring your favorite dish. You do not have to bring turkey. That's up to you. Amen. <laughs> but God bless you. And immediately after service this next Sunday, then we'll have a time of fellowship over in the Life Center. Time of eating. Amen. So we can broaden our borders. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. And we want you to just have a good week. Father God, bless each one. We leave this building but not your presence. Lord, we pray your blood covers, your blood protection up over each one. Give them that which is needed protection, Lord, from the onslaughts of the enemy. We love you now. Thank you for this good word, Lord. And your blessing, Father, appointed to